My name is Taylor Painterwolf, and I'm a fiber artist and I work with um, felted wool that I make and dye myself. There, there's a few different types of wool that I make um, to use that sort of gives me different thickness and texture. Some of it that I make, I take a wool roving, which is kind of um, loose wool that hasn't been, like before you spin it. It's the kind of wool people would use to spin yarn with but it's been cleaned and everything. So it's white and uh, nice and clean. And then I spread it all out on, I make layers of it and spread it out um, on a really big piece of bubble wrap. And I'll usually do this in the living room <laughs> at my house and make these layers. Then I roll it up in the bubble wrap and I put it in the washing machine, top loading washing machine. And I stand over it and do this a whole bunch and agitate it. Um, and then kind of let it run and then I make my felt. And so then that's the felt making. Then it's time for the dyeing. Um, so I uh, have a big, I have a, a burner thing that's attached to a propane tank um, that you might use to fry a turkey or something like that. And I put a big pot on it and cause you have to heat wool to dye it. Um, and I use acid dyes which is what you use for um, to dye wool. It sounds more dangerous than it is. It's really not. It just means that you mix it with uh, citric acid crystals or vinegar to get it to activate. So I do this on the back porch a lot of times. I've got my pot and my big cauldron and I put the dye in and salt and citric acid crystals and put the felt in. And then, you know, you just stir on it, stir it, check on it every once in a while. Um, I'm not precise at all with the colors. I'm just kind of like pinch of this, pinch of this, shake it in. Oh, that was too much. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. Um, which is not how I learned how to do the dyeing process at school. <laughs> so kind of went my own way with that. Very haphazard, um, but I really like the results that I get. And it's one of my favorite parts of uh, my process is the dyeing part of it because I never totally know what colors I'm going to get. Um, so it's always kind of exciting to see how that turns out. And, uh, and then also if you stir it more, then your color is going to be a little more even. If you don't stir it very much, then you're going to get kind of interesting, irregular color to it that might have some kind of staining on it and stuff like that or little spots and blotches and I, I really like when that happens so it's always each color is different it's always unique every time so my kind of big inspiration sort of inspiration that flows throughout for pretty much everything is um, like satellite imagery and aerial photography and um, like textures, kind of textures and shapes found in, uh, in natural environments. So I have um, it's kind of a lot of places that I pull inspiration from. Every time I go for a hike, I like to take really close up photographs of tree bark or moss growing on something or patterns in a rock or just things like that. So it takes kind of a long time to, to go on a hike with me because I'd stop a lot and take all these little pictures. With the young kids, I kind of my big thing is encouraging them to see art as, you know, a, just a wide variety of possibilities. Um, they frequently think it's, it's only drawing and painting. And if they can't draw a human figure perfectly, then they're a bad artist. And so that's kind of, I guess, the main thing that I try to get them away from is that, and as someone who uses different materials myself, then, you know, painting and drawing are kind of more traditional materials, um, then you know, it's kind of easy for me to introduce them to other stuff that they might not be as familiar with. So I mostly try, I think I try to get them to, to just see that there's a lot of possibilities, that being an artist doesn't mean 
just one thing. It can mean a lot of different things. And like using your creativity can also mean a lot of different things.